Welcome back to As It Happens. The number to call me on live is 011-759-6340. Or you can tweet me at Liesl underscore VD Madver or ENCA. Before I go to my interview, let me answer some of your video questions. My name is Tapelo Graham and good evening to Lizelle then. Um, Lizelle, it's very difficult to spot the IFP outside KZN. Now one wonders whether the IFP is relevant when coming to national issues that affect the country as a whole. Can we still take the IFP seriously when coming to national matters? I think, thank you very much for that question. I think it's a very valid question. It is something that the IFP recognizes that our voice is not heard loudly enough around the country. But I do think that in parliament, for example, the IFP punches above its weight. I think we raise very pertinent issues, whether it's got to do with sanitary products for all school girls that need them, whether it's to speak on SASA issues, whether it's that we speak on issues of the economy. But you're quite right. There's lots of work to be done for the IFP in order for our voice to be heard across the country. And we are relevant. Um, I think that in Parliament, for example, we're the third largest opposition party, but thank you very much for your question. Uh, good evening, Liesl. It's Paddy Pereira from Parklands in Cape Town. My question to you revolves around the uh, seceding away from the Republic of South Africa. I personally would give you my support for the Kingdom of KwaZulu-Natal to secede and have its own independent state. My question to you, Liesl, would you support the Western Cape if we chose to do the same thing? Thank you very much for the question. It's a, it's a very difficult question to answer, but the IFP is a party that believes in one South Africa. Um, we believe we are stronger, united, and it's not an IFP policy that says that we should uh, secede any provinces. We think it's better to be one country one flag, one nation. Thank you very much. Well, my next interview is with Deputy Higher Education Minister Puti Manamela. We will talk about fee-free higher education and his plan to stop gender-based violence at institutions of higher learning. Welcome, Puti. Thank you. Thank you, Lizelle. <laughs> Puti, yesterday you did your budget vote speech in Parliament. Uh, you talked about a new plan to fight gender-based violence, uh, violence at institutions of higher learning. I would like to know how would this be different from any of the other government plans we've had before, which unfortunately fortunately has failed to fight gender-based violence. And in particular, how will this new plan of yours address the rape culture at, at institutions of higher learning? Yeah. Look, I, mean, I think the, the new focus for uh, me and for our department and ministry is to look beyond security, because I think there's been an emphasis so much that we need to beef up security and all of that, even with the response of the Mango Sutu uh, you know, tech, uh, uh, you know, killing of, of the young woman. Um, yes. Now, my, so, 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 so the point is that it, it's a social issue, and we've got to ensure that we speak to both young men and women. Uh, it's, it's a question of uh, behavior, it's a question of male privilege and entitlement. Um, you know, and I think that we, we, we also need to uh, you know, approach it in that way. So, uh, you know, so our messaging will essentially be about that, but also involve uh, you know, the students themselves into finding creative solutions on how do we. So it's not, it's not about government coming up you know, then saying, look, there's this problem, we want to resolve it. But it's about getting the stakeholders on campus but to work together. And to how will it be different? I mean, this. government's got this integrated plan of action to fight gender-based violence. It's now run its course. It's not saved one life. Um, are you sure that this plan will, this plan that you've got will actually deliver results? Well, I mean, I don't know what you mean when you say it hasn't saved, uh, uh, you know, one life. Yes, um, you know, we are concerned at the rate at which uh, on our campuses um, uh, and even off campus, because what happens on campus is a reflection of what happens in the broader society. But our concern on campus also means that, um, you know, we cannot impose a particular program and that's why part of what my focus is uh, you know is to get young people into conversations about what should be the solutions that are generated and that are led by them and I'm talking about supporting uh, youth-led programs uh, youth-led organizations um, uh, you know which we believe would be one of the ways in okay. which we can deal with the situation 
And if you had to engage these students that you're planning to engage, what do you think they'll tell you what should be done in terms of Mdudusi Manana? The Commission for Gender Equality today called for his removal as a member of parliament. What would be your response if they had to ask you about that? Well, look, I mean, I think I've, I've, I've had what, uh, uh, you know, happened. There's uh, a woman who's uh, opened a case against uh, uh, Mdudusi Manana. Um, and, and I think that, uh, you know, the, firstly, the law needs to take its course. If it's true what we've had, what has been reported in the news, it's definitely condemnable with, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the outrage that it deserves. But he's uh, already been felt guilty I, I, once. Surely he shouldn't be sharing the benches of parliament with us anymore. Well, I mean, I think that's an issue that, that uh, uh, you know, our political party, the ANC, will, will, will have to deal with. Obviously, um, you know, um, we, we have to ensure that we send a message that we uh, are, uh, you know, as a party uh, and as government, uh, you know, take seriously allegations around gender-based violence, not only around him, but around everyone in, in society who perpetrates this act. Just this uh, today, I was listening on radio, one of the uh, artists, uh, Babes Wotumo, is reporting that. Uh, so you know, that, the, yes. Uh, exactly, and, and I think, so, so um, to do the manana uh, and everybody must else. all to count and, everybody. Exactly, that that we with. must, exactly. Let me get to free education. I think well done. It's something that you've been campaigning for, for many years. Yeah. But how free is it, Buti? Because we've had to raise VAT, we've had to raise the petrol uh, levy. So in fact, we're punishing poor people for wanting to have free education. Are you happy with how we're funding free education? Look, I mean, firstly, the, the, the question of raising VAT doesn't only speak to education. Uh, okay. It speaks to general government expenditure. Uh, I think but that's, large that's the first thing. That. The second thing is that uh, there are certain government programs which we uh, believe may be important, but may not necessarily be a priority as compared to education. The third, th the third thing is that we... Uh, obviously knew that there has to be compromises mm. uh, if we are to provide uh, uh, you know free uh, uh, education and I think lastly we need to be looking at this as an investment into our own uh, future as we speak 290 I mean 270,000 young people who ordinarily would not have had this mm. opportunity will today have this particular opportunity yes there have been teething challenges there are uh, you, you know kids out there who some of them have not received their allowances accommodation uh, textbooks and all of that the uh, minister has instructed the NSFAS to deal with all of those challenges but we believe that uh, you know yes this year it was trial and error we've learned from those mistakes and and you know when we roll it out next year we think that uh, you know we'll avoid all these challenges Thank you very much, Putty. We are now going to take some calls. We'll take your calls live on 011-759-6340. And let's start with Anele from Kempton Park. Hello, Anele. Hi, how are you? Fine, and how are you? I'm fine, thank you. I will go straight to the question. Uh, what is the impact of the functional backlog resulting in political deaths in KZN? You're asking about political deaths in KZN. Well, as you know, the, the ruling party has lost quite a few members to, to so-called political killings. Um, for us, we've just sadly lost um, one of our comrades who were gunned down in Ulundi. I think the issue, as I said before, the issue of violence, the issue of crime, um, and, and in particular political killings in KwaZulu-Natal is of grave concern to the IFP. And it's something we believe that is hopefully being dealt with now that uh, the new Minister of Police has been to KwaZulu-Natal and he said he's launched an investigation and we hope that all these culprits, people who are driving these political killings in KZN will be brought to book. Our next caller is Menzi from Kandla. Hello, Menzi. Hello, Lizette. Uh, you're speaking to uh, Menzi. Hello, Menzi. Uh, my question is, since IFP is a one-man show, don't you think it's a good idea for you and your IFP maybe to amalgamate with the DA, which is only the option that we have, the growing party, because there is no IFP without Mangosutu Pelezi. So after Mangosutu is, is no longer there, there will be no IFP. Don't you think maybe you should uh, join the DA. Thank you. 
Menzi, thank you very much for your response. I don't think the IFP is a one-man show. I think our leader, we, we, our leader is a leader of an integrity. Um, but of course, we're a big caucus. We've got 10 MPs. We are a party that's uh, growing in KwaZulu-Natal. I don't think there's any need for us to, to merge with another political party. Come 2019, the IFP will emerge stronger. Uh, we'll be a, a bigger party, we'll have more seats in Parliament, and um, we, are, we are proud to have our leader, but he's definitely not a man, one-man show. The next caller is Fulufolo from Toyando. Good evening. Yes, ma'am, how are you? Fine, and how are you? I'm good. Uh, Lizelle, let me make it short. Mm -hmm. if, if possible, you can pass it to my comrade there. Every day in the Parliament, South Africans, we are talking about unemployment rate when it comes to youth. But my concern is, to my understanding, if you go to the mining industry, 90% of the people who are working in the mining industry are foreign nationals. If you go to the people who are doing farming, all the farmers from Messina to Cape Town, majority of farmers are employing foreign nationals, people from Zimbabwe, from Mozambique, and so forth. What is it that we are doing about it? If possible, pass this question to my comrade, that you are your guest next to you. Thank you. Comrade Bhuti, I think you can answer that for yeah. us. Well, I, I'm not sure about the source of your, of your statistics. Uh, uh, you know, but the, the, there might be a bit of some mistakes that you have committed there in whoever gave you that information. But I think what is important is that any person who's legitimately uh, got access into our country through our laws and has a work permit can work in our country. And we encourage uh, you know, South Africans, young South Africans in particular, uh, to take up uh, jobs uh, you know, if they've got skills in the mining. We generally have the challenge uh, of, uh, of unemployment and I think that's uh, uh, you know, and creating jobs uh, and, and I think that's the, that's the issue which uh, uh, you know, we need to uh, deal with. We also have uh, I think challenges around skills and our efforts are at ensuring that we skill young people so that they're able to take up uh, jobs, but also so that they become entrepreneurial and create uh, uh, more jobs themselves. Thank you. Let's speak to Bafana from Sebuking. Bafana? Good evening, how are you? I'm fine, and how are you? I'm good. Uh, Lisa, I, was, I just wanted to know what is uh, the uh, IFP take on the issue of land expropriation without compensation and uh, your, your views about the whole thing of well, firstly, the IFP supported the establishment of a parliamentary committee to look into Section 25 of the Constitution. We do support um, land distribution. We think um, South Africans need access to land, our people need access to land. The current models that have been used by government has failed, so we did support the process that is unfolding in Parliament. Um, you know, we, we will support uh, whatever recommendations come from that committee. Matlatsi from Foslores, hello. Hello, hi. Hello, Matlatsi. Um, thank you so much. Uh, Liesl, do you think it's fair for South Africans not to own land but to rent? No, of course it's not fair. South Africans must own the land. South Africans must have access to land. It is part of, of the IFP's views. I think it's important that, um, you know, and that is the process, what, it, what, what is unfolding in Parliament at, this, at the moment, is to see how do we give access to, 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 to land to our people in a meaningful and sustainable way. Um, Buti, do you want to add to that? Well, uh, most definitely. I think the... the uh in the, what, what I really want to encourage, especially young people and generally South Africans, is to make contributions into the committee that has been set up in Parliament. Already more than 100,000 or so of submissions have been made. And I think this is an opportunity for us to collectively chart a way forward in terms of what needs to happen with regards to the landless majority of, uh, uh, you know, of our people. Clearly, uh, you know, the ruling party has made its decisions uh, around policy, but I think this is an opportunity for South Africans to engage with, uh, you know, what is essentially our approach. The situation we'll cannot go the way it is. Hopefully we'll find. But clearly we can't have, uh, you know, the minority owning a chunk uh, of the land, whereas the majority remain landless. And what are your views on the Ngonyama Trust, uh, considering that there's the report um, 
from the panel of experts in terms of the recommendations of the Ingonyama Trust? Well, I mean, I think, look, it's, it's uh, uh, when, we, when we speak about land, I think we need to speak about land in general, uh, meaning that, um, you know, land that is uh, privately owned, land that has been, uh, uh, you know, either communal land and all of that, and how do we ensure that, uh, you know, land in its totality uh, is actually used whatever form or context, uh, but it's actually used by and for the majority of, uh, of South Africans. And I think it's going to be one of the uh, critical engagements that the, uh, you know, the committee and South Africans in general uh, you know, will have to look at. I think what we should be careful about is that we should not make it an ethnic issue. Yes. Uh, we should make it a national issue. Puti, yes. thank you very much. Thanks for your time. That is it for tonight. On behalf of all the guest anchors this week, I would like to thank ENCA and the As It Happens team for giving us this great platform to engage with all of you at home. And to all the loyal viewers, viewers at home, thank you for watching. Have a good night and have a blessed weekend. Goodbye.